One problem that I have when making YouTube videos for Power BI is it's really hard to find a good way to share the measures that I use. This is from an upcoming video and it has 68 different measures that I just want to give people. I don't want people to actually write this out when they're trying to do this tutorial. And I've tried a couple of different ways, such as using the DAX query view so that you just copy and paste this text. But if you do that, you have to click update model 68 different times. That's not a good experience. And basically the way that I've tried to resolve this is I've created a template. It's basically just an Excel. It is a template that will generate different amounts of code. And if you select all of these items, go into a fresh Power BI with the correct, um, you know, it's like names, open up your tabular editor, paste everything in a C-sharp script and run it. You will, in fact, be able to create 68 different measures inside your new model within a couple of seconds. So let me show you how this works. Now, this template is going to be in my GitHub and available for you for free. And you can find all of the links that I'm going to mention in this video in the description. And we're going to actually go over three different processes that makes this possible, which is one, pulling measures from DAX Studio from an existing Power BI report. Then we're going to use the script in order to actually get those measures into a different Power BI report. And also, I'm going to show you how you can modify those measures so that you can add things like format strings, descriptions, whatever you want. And then, of course, uh, there's a problem with how it gets formatted once you actually enter it into the Power BI report. So I'm going to show you a quick way to use another external tool to format every DAX measure very quickly in your reports. So let's get started. Now, in order to extract measures from your Power BI report, you're going to need two different things. The first one is the DAX Studio external tool. And the second one is the VertiPack Analyzer. This is, I'm going to call it VA because VertiPack Analyzer is a mouthful, but VA is essentially an Excel file with a macro installed. This is what it looks like. And if your organization doesn't allow external macros to run because of security reasons, I do have a different way to do this for you. So just stay tuned. Okay. But first just navigate to your Power BI report and then make sure that you open up DAX Studio. And once you do, you will be able to actually see all of these different options. Go into the advanced ribbon and click on export metrics. If you export metrics, it's going to save as file type analyzer VPACs. I already have it saved, so I'm not going to do that right now. But once you actually have that, you can basically um, go to your Excel file, open up the VPACs file and make sure you go into VertiPack Analyzer, open VPACs, find the VPACs file that you saved from your DAX studio. And once you have that, just wait for a couple of moments and it will give you a lot of information. It actually has a lot of things that it can give you, including, for example, information about uh, the tables, information about user hierarchies and whatnot. And you can actually see them in the different, uh, you know, it's like tabs of the Excel sheet. But at the very end, there is a tab called DAX expressions. And this is actually what I'm using. So this is something that I've already added to my specific VertiPack file. But this here, you can actually see, has most of the information that you would want from your measures. You can actually see that my template is based around this formatting as well, exactly one to one. So I've just copied this here. That being the case, you can actually just copy this and, you know, to like use it into your VertiPack file, or you can also just, you know, to like copy the formulas that are being used here and paste that into your VertiPack file. And you can see it as a little bit of an extension there. But if you aren't able to use the VertiPack file, there's only one other way that you can do it, which is <clears throat> First, you have to go back to your DAX studio. Then you have to click on this button, DM, scroll down, and you'll be able to find something called TM schema measures. Drag that into your query pane here. And once you do that, you can just click, uh, just press F5 to run this query. Once you do, you'll have a results page, which will allow you to actually just copy all of the measures that you have here. So select the results plane, so, uh, click on control A, control C, go into just a, you know, it's like an Excel sheet and paste it out and you'll have most of the information that you need. You may find that in some versions of DAX Studio, you're not able to copy all of the headers, but I do believe in some of the later versions, if you hit control H C, then you'll be able to copy it with the headers. I think in my version right now, I can't, but nevertheless, I have everything that I need, which is all of the names, table names, um, the measures and the display folders, as well as whether it's hidden or not. 
pretty good stuff. Now, the main thing to let you know is that what this um, template is actually doing is using advanced C sharp scripts in order to programmatically create and modify measures. You can actually read a little bit more about it from the tabular editor documentation. Right now, I'm just using tabular editor two to showcase this. Tabular Editor 3 is probably better for most developers, but because Tabular Editor 2 is free, I do think that a lot more people will be able to just download it and just get to using it. You can read a bit more about the different measures and the different scripts that are available here, but I've basically just you taken this script, put it into, you know, it's like the script generator, and I've started to use different formulas in order to generate the script needed in order to do different tasks. Here, you can see that the this column uses uh, scripts in order to create the measure. You don't actually need to run this if the measure exists. And actually, it's detrimental. If you create a measure that already exists, it's going to add a numeric value to the end of the name in order to make sure that you don't have two measures of the same name, because that's not something that's possible. That's still something that Tabular Editor does automatically. So you don't really have a problem with running this script too many times. But after you've created the measure, you can add a comment to the measure. You can add formatting to the measure, like using a format string. You can add multiple display folders, and you can also update the DAX formula if you so choose. So basically, if I was to copy all of this code into a fresh Power BI report, let's say I only have the data model and I do not have any of the measures, what I would do is I would just open up the Power BI, you know, it's like a tabular editor, and I would just copy the exact things that I needed. So if I wanted to just create the measure without adding the comment, changing the format or the display folder, you can see that I could just click, uh, select this column here, just copy all of this out, and I could just run it in my trusty tabular editor. I need to go into tabular editor and click C sharp script in order to make this work. I just hit control V and I can click this run script in order to add all these measures. So let's try doing that now. And you can see that almost immediately, I actually realized if you hit control one, the measures disappear, but basically all of the measures are here and you can see that all of them have been created. So this is great. And this is just from creating the measure. Now, if you wanted to add a comment, now let's go and just, just select one of these, right? If you wanted to add a comment here, let's say this, is a comment you can actually just click on this add comment go find the c sharp script run it and you'll actually see that this uh, c sharp script has now run and this america's delta past year percentage if we can find it right here now has in the description this is a comment this is actually really useful and we're going to hit Control s so file save right now and this will propagate into the measure. And it's actually really useful, like I was saying, because if we can find it here as well, you can actually see the description right when you hover over it. This is a comment right there. So that's actually very useful. So when you're looking to see what a measure actually does, you can see it in the description. So really nice functionality. There are, of course, the other things like adding a format string, which you can do. Now you might recognize format strings as something that looks more like this. This video isn't going to go into format strings right now, but I do recommend reading up about these. It's really good stuff. And of course, display folders. Now display folders is basically what you see just in Power BI. Now this is a display folder and we can go to, I believe the model view, and you'll be able to see that these items are in display folders. This display folder is just written as something like this, and you can actually have multiple levels of display folders by using the forward slash. So if you put in two forward slashes and put in like, for example, test, now you can see that IBCS measures now has another folder called test. You can actually propagate this into your C sharp code and it will just make them for you. So if you have a way to modify your display folders and organize your measures in a way that makes more sense, you absolutely can do that. And of course, the last column that I've added is a way to update the DAX. And I guess this will be more important if you're trying to do some kind of work with a lot of other people and you're just going over not necessarily the Power BI report itself. But if you have some business stakeholders that you need to run the logic of these uh, calculations together with, maybe it makes sense to pull this out into an Excel and just go over them one by one. 
If that is the case, then you can change the DAX expression right here in the Excel file, maybe use OneDrive as a versioning control system, and you'll be able to update the DAX just by clicking on this. In that circumstance, what I recommend is not to select the create measure column, but just select these last four items, copy this down into your tabular editor, and you should be able to modify all of your different measures without creating new ones. Now, the one problem you can actually run into when you're working with multiple people or even trying to do this yourself is that in your template file, you might find that you're not actually maintaining the most appropriate DAX formatting. And in order to, you know, it's like fix that when working with a lot of measures like this, the easiest way to do that is to use Bravo. Bravo is an external tool for Power BI, which you basically just can download. It's from SQL BI, it's for free. And one of the operations that you can do using this is to click on Format DAX. Select it and click on all of the measures and simply click on Format Selected and it will format all of the measures for you so that when you go back to your Power BI report, you can see that everything is nice and clean and that's basically it. A pretty cool use case of this is actually to use ChatGPT where you can actually upload your templates ask ChatGPT to look at all of the measures, modify them if necessary, as well as adding a new display folder hierarchy and um, to, you know, it's like add some kind of documentation into the data model. I did actually try this a couple of times, but I got to tell you right now that maybe it's just what ChatGPT is like these days, but it did not really succeed in a lot of different ways. Like uh, just the fact that there was an e equal sign in the DAX expressions really messed with, you know, it's like how <laughs> ChatGPT could actually provide good um, DAX expressions. It also really did not seem to want to do the work with uh, creating descriptions for everything. It did okay for the first couple, as you can see, but for the rest, it just kind of stopped. ChatGPT as it stands is not really the best way to do this. If you are looking to create, use um, some kind of large language model, I do recommend trying out the Copilot uh, in Power BI, which should now be able to generate measure descriptions for you. So as always, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and take care.